compute critical z values for levels of confidence well we can we already have the normal probability calculator opened up so we can do that right here we want to use the between calculator and um, and since I have 88% level of confidence I want the the let's see I'm going to use the standard normal zero mean and a one for the standard deviation and I want to find bounds such that I get the point 88 like 88% 0 0.88 compute it look at that I'm getting my bounds now the Z critical value is just going to be the greater of the like the, the positive one two decimal places is 1.55 Okay, so that's that's my critical value. That's the that's like between one and two. You can see 1.55 is right there, negative 1.55, such that 88% of the area is shaded red. Cool. Construct a confidence interval for the population proportion at a given level of confidence. Um, well, we're going to use StatCrunch for this, and I'm going to put this right here. There's a nice little room for it under stat there's this is what you call a um it's a proportion stat um, we're going to do a one sample proportion stat with a summary i don't have the data i just have the summary x n my confidence level the number of successes is x 860 the number of observations 1200 now i'm doing a confidence level a confidence interval and i'm i am doing 0.95 so that's all set i'm just going to click compute and get my values i have a lower limit and upper limit is that too low let's bring it up a little um three decimal places the lower limit is 0.691 i don't have to round it so i'm just going to copy it and paste it 0.691 and the upper limit is 0 0.742 cool all right confidence levels they're easy <laughs> okay now this is one that you probably you had on your homework determine the point estimate and the population mean oh point estimate of the population mean and the margin of error for this confidence interval well the point estimate is going to be the halfway point between them between 23 and 27 <laughs> The point estimate is going to be the halfway point between them. So that's an average. I'm just going to do that. 23 plus 27, evaluate that, divided by two, 25. You probably knew that was the answer without even doing anything, 25. The margin of error is how far it is from the point estimate to one of the bounds. Now, I'm gonna just do that in my head. 20, the difference between 27 and 25 is two. You can subtract that yourself uh if you happen to get numbers that don't work out so nicely but in this case it's pretty straightforward two so 27 is two above the point estimate and 23 is two below that's a margin of error and that's a point estimate and this is a confidence interval okie dokie here's some good stuff now um we have a, the trade volume of a stock is the number of shares traded on a given day the following data in millions represents the volume of certain stock traded for a random sample of 40 trading days in 20 2007 <laughs> 2007 okay um here's the data table i'm going to need it because i'm to create a confidence interval so let's copy it right now open it in stack crunch i mean okay and I'm going to um, uh, let's just let's I'm just gonna close this and see it says to do a point estimate and construct a 90% confidence interval for the number of shares well all that can be done at the same time under stat this is a T stat a one sample T stat with data this time I've got all the data um, here's my variable and I'm going to do a confidence interval for the mu the mean but I'm going to change that to 90% it's going to tell me the sample mean as well so it's telling me the sample mean was 2.3355 
Uh, so that rounds up to 2.36. That's the point estimate, the middle of my confidence interval, 2.336. Oops, I did it in the wrong place. 2.336. And let's go back to, let's erase this. Um, the lower bound and the upper bound. So the lower bound is here, uh, 2.012, but I have to round that up to 2.013. 2.013 and the upper bound 2.658 that doesn't need to be rounded so just copy and paste it 2.658 interpret the confidence interval it always goes the same way there is a 90 percent confidence that the mean number of shares traded is between the lower and upper bounds that's it um not less than the lower bound or greater than the upper bound. Let's move on to a second random sample of 40 days gave this. Um, so let's see. The uh, We're going to do the same thing. Let's just open it in StackCrunch and we're going to make do a t-stat one sample with uh, summary, I'm sorry, with data, <laughs> data in column. And now we're doing a, again, a, uh, let's just double check nine, another 90% confidence interval. So 90 is my confidence level compute it. And so I have my bounds 2.085, 2.085 is the lower bound and the upper bound 2.7. 957 rounds to 2.796. 2.796. Okay, again, the same interpretation. It 90% confidence that the mean number of shares is between the lower and upper bounds. Why is the confidence interval part B and C different? Well, we have different samples. The data is different. Um, the T alphas are not different because you have 40, the sample size is the same on both. So the critical values of T are the same. Uh, variation in sampling, probably that's the answer. The samples have the same means, but different standard deviations and lead to different confidence. Do they have the same mean? I don't think so. The first one had a mean of 2.336. This one has a mean of 2.440. So that's different mean. The confidence intervals are different because of very okay the samples have different means and standard deviations that lead to different confidence intervals um yeah i'm sure that's it uh, the chances that they have the same con the same standard deviation it's like practically none but they have it's just sampling variation you're going to have different sample standard deviations different sample means every time okay suppose the null hypothesis is not rejected um Okay, well, let's see. Twelve, six years ago, 12.6% of registered births were te to teenage mothers. A sociologist believes that it has increased since then. Well, if we rejected the, if we, sorry, we, if the null is not rejected, then we would say there is not sufficient evidence to support this hunch, to say that this percentage has increased. There is not sufficient evidence to conclude that the percentage of teenage mothers has increased. That's the language you want to use. It's about how much evidence there is in support of the alternative hypothesis, not how much evidence there is supporting the null. We, we're we finding evidence to support the alternative. That's the whole, the whole gist of a hypothesis test. Okay, test the hypothesis using p-value approach. Okay, um, let's do that in StatCrunch now. Oh, first you want to check whether the sample size is big enough to use a um, to use the the as uh, purport the, the normal approximation for the uh, binomial distribution so is n times p naught times 1 minus p naught greater than or equal to 10 well let's just check n is uh, let's see 150 times p naught which is the p from the null hypothesis 0 0.54 times 1 minus p not which is 1 minus 0.54 you can actually do that in your head 0.46 
it's 37.26. It's a big enough sample size, so you can say yes. Um, let's find the p-value. Let's use some technology. Let's under stat, under uh, proportion stats, one sample proportion stats, we're going to, we got the summary data. We don't have the, the full data. The full data would be like 1010000, zero, one, zero, zero, zero. like you'd have a whole column of numbers ones for all the yeses and zeros for all the noes. But here we've got just 72 successes out of 150 observations. The null hypothesis says that p is equal to 0.54. Alternatively, you're saying p is less than 0.54. So that's your that's your input here. Just click compute and you get your standard hypothesis test output. And um, the main thing is this p value rounded to three decimal places would just be 0 0.070. Now the alpha level for this test, the significance level 0 0.05 is lower than that, which means our p-value is not low enough to reject the null hypothesis. Remember the p-value is in a sense. How plausible is the null hypothesis? Okay, we need the null hypothesis to be very implausible to reject it, lower than 0.05. But we do not reject the null hypothesis because p value is greater than alpha. That's it. Several years ago, the reported mean age of an inmate on death row was 35.2 years. A sociologist wondered whether the mean age of a death row inmate has changed since then. Well, let's stop right there. Um, the null hypothesis is that the mean age is equal to 35.2. The alternative is that the mean mu is not equal to. Okay. Now, when you're here, we can, we can, now, I have to be honest with you. I really don't like it when my stat lab tells you you can make a confidence interval to conclude a hypothesis test it's what i always say is using a confidence interval to do a hypothesis test is like using a monkey wrench to hammer a nail into the wall like yes okay it you can do that but that's not what it's designed for um and it doesn't give you p value either so it's just a sloppy way of doing it and it it is but yes you get the same conclusion um, which is not true for a, a proportion hypothesis test because the 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 critical values on the um, the bounds of the the int the confidence interval aren't going to match up with the critical values of the, the critical z values of the test. Anyway, let's just make a, a confidence interval and be done with it. So um, we've got. I'm going to go back to stat. Let's close this. It's a little bit ugly to have all that stuff open. Um, a T stat, because we're talking about the mean, one sample with summary. We only have the summary data. We're told the sa there was a sample mean of 33.4, a sample standard deviation of 8.7, and a sample size of 32. And a confidence interval we were asked to make a 99% confidence interval. So let's do that right now. 0.99 and compute. Now I'm got, I've got my upper and lower bounds. Two decimal places, I can do that. 29.18, I have to round it to 29.18. And the upper bound is 37.62, 37.62. All right, so what do we conclude from that? Well. Remember, for confidence intervals, we would say, I'm 99% confident that the mean, you know, mean age on death row is between those bounds. So could I reject the, the mean age is 35.2 with a significance level of, of 0 0.01? Like, that's the flip side, really. And because 35.2 is within that bound, I can't reject the hypothesis that that is actually the mean. It could very well be. Any value within that range could be the mean with 99% confidence. So I would say since the given mean age is not in the interval, I'm, I'm sorry, is in the interval, do not reject the null hypothesis. 
and that's it. So I, I'm doing a hypothesis test with a monkey wrench. Are you happy, my stat lab? Yes, of course it's happy. <laughs>